Foot Clan, we got a great episode for you today. We're diving into the world of Dynasty Fantasy Football, answering a ton of questions. We're also talking about the long-term value of players like Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook, Ezekiel Elliott, Terry McLaurin, and a whole lot more. Don't miss a minute. Foot Clan, there are 10 days left to get in on the Ultimate Draft Kit pre-order package. We're talking about getting $15 worth of gift cards already. You get a free copy of our book, but most importantly, you can get an opportunity, a chance of a lifetime to play in this year's Listener League with us. Plus, you get the Ultimate Draft Kit. Which is, you kind of skipped the lead there. Well, I mean, but the, there's only 10 days left for all the rest. Okay. No matter what, you get the lowest possible price. You want to get it. You know you're going to get it for this year's season. Might as well do it now. Give yourself something awesome. And if you get the plus, you actually have access to the Dynasty Pass right now. 10 days left. Get it now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, March 1st. Oh, yeah. It's a good month. Madness. There is that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, m- See, March. Yeah, because it's yeah. March. That was right. March. I was going more with the birthday madness. Oh, that's true. There is a, There are a lot of birthdays around these parts. Yeah, Mike, yours is the first one. Yes. Very soon. Happy almost birthday. Thank you. Uh, we have a good show for you today. Going to talk some Dynasty trade questions. Get into the news. Try to constrain our strong opinions about capital letter press releases being sent out. <laughs> oh gosh! By the likes of our hometown with franchise typos. quarterback with typos. Yeah, all caps. I mean, we're talking. No editing. We're talking about that, right? At some point. Yes. Okay. We'll get into good. It. We'll get into. Yes, we will get into it. And like I said, we'll try to constrain <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Uh, join the foot.com's our fantasy football community. The fantasy is the website. And you heard Jason at the top, but you can get a chance to win a listener league spot. If you pre-order the ultimate draft kit at ultimate draftkit.com right now before March 10th. So head over there. Quick question is this, then we'll get into the news, Mike. So just, just hold on a second. Okay. Uh, how do you approach making dynasty trades? This question comes in off of Instagram from Holster 33 wants to know, your approach for making dynasty trades that actually get done. Yeah, one of the best things about dynasty is is I and every dynasty player has about 20 different approaches, right? Because are you in a rebuild? Are you trying to stay hot for a championship? But generically speaking, with a, with a broad brush, my favorite trade to make in a dynasty league, uh, I've pulled this off several times to success, Andy, I've seen you pull this off many times to success, is trading a star player towards the end. Not 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 at the end. They're still very, very valuable. This would be like a Dalvin Cook right now, someone that is clearly very valuable for fantasy, but they are going to come with a lot to get Dalvin Cook, and you trade them for a young up and coming prospect, you know, you go and get a JK Dobbins plus a bunch of other stuff. And then all of a sudden you look back a year or two later and you go, well, JK Dobbins is the better asset anyways. Plus I got all this extra stuff to help me rebuild. That is my favorite. I did that with Julio turning him into CD lamb plus at one point. Um, I, I just, I think it's the best way to stay competitive and rebuild on the fly. It is very emotionally difficult to do. Because, and it should be, like to, to make that maneuver, it should feel difficult. Then you know you're onto something because ultimately you have a player that has proven themselves and most of the time you're making a leap on another player that you believe in. So, you know, it was, it was girly to get Dalvin Cook before Cook broke out mm-hmm. for me in one league. And like you said, Dobbins is a perfect example. Maybe it's a Cam Akers. Maybe, maybe it's even a Javante and you end up, 
you know, swinging with a McCaffrey or a, a, a Dalvin Cook, like you Didn't said. Didn't you do that as well with Mahomes? Didn't you turn him into like Josh Allen plus a bunch of stuff? Yes. Yeah. And I also traded him for Herbert a couple last, years last ago. year. So it is difficult to do because you, you know, if you have one of the top running backs or players in the league, like, a you know, Julio in his prime, it's very easy to see, you know, I can win the title this year with this player. And that's the balance. That's what makes Dynasty interesting is you have you have teams that are rebuilds, you have teams that are in it for this year, and everything in between, teams with tons of draft capital, teams without draft capital, and generally you are trying to paint a picture of, you know, it seems easier in a Dynasty League to do a trade that really works for both teams. I think sure. that's more possible in a Dynasty League. And you don't know if trades work for years a lot of the times mm -hmm. as well. We have gone back and looked at trades in our uh, long-running dynasty league that we thought were absolute, you know, home one -sided, runs. One-sided, yeah, lopsided, awful trades for one of them that we were exactly wrong, and it was lopsided, just the complete other direction. And it's why you don't veto trades, apart from collusion, is because you're actually when you veto a trade. You're presuming your knowledge of the future onto the trade as though you know that these players aren't going to get hurt or get in, you know, go outperform what their expectation is. Now, when you're, uh, you know, gearing up to make the offer, what is your starting point? Do you come in uh, with the with the overwhelming or the I should say coming in with the uh, your essentially your ceiling like this is what I'm willing to go with or do you generally come in with the headroom of knowing how the the dance of the trade, uh, like these these unwritten rules of trading mm -hmm. that somehow everybody, everyone knows what they are. So how do you go in? Do you go with your best offer or do you, the majority of the time, still start with that wiggle room? I'll hop in here first. Um, I, I've obviously gotten plenty of trades done, but I don't feel like I get nearly as many trades done as Andy. And I wonder if my approach is wrong. Because I know what I do, and what I do is neither of those. I don't come in at my ceiling, and I don't like build in pre-build in known wiggle room. Unless it's like a draft pick, maybe I'll go. Oh, I'm willing to go a second off from a third, and then I'll go. But otherwise, what I'm usually trying to do is just try to make a fair deal that I hope is just accepted. And then what happens a lot of times is I'm left with like nowhere to go. Uh, from there, because I, I don't have any piece that like is fair enough to just add in. So that's where I'm at. And like I said, I, I just kind of try to make a deal that works for both parties and push go. Um, but Andy, what do you I mean, usually do? I, I, I noticed in Dynasty League, sometimes you have to have a conversation to see if you agree about the value of a certain player with somebody. So sometimes you have to say, hey, am I right to think that you value Jalen Waddle more than Deontay Johnson? You know, you, those conversations sometimes have to happen before you even start trading because people can value players vastly different in sure. a dynasty league. The other thing is the second that you say somebody's on the block to somebody, you've devalued that player. Mm -hmm. You almost need to manipulate their interest in that player without saying it, you know, which means broader discussions to start. And then, yeah, I guess I would let that guy get into this deal. Yeah, I guess I would work a, a, a running back into that, even though that might have been your agenda all along. Unfortunately, when you say, hey, Zeke's on the block, you've just taken him down one notch or you've eliminated that one manager in the league that's like actually wanting him from coming and finding you. So it, it's a lot of dancing and gamesmanship. And maybe I've been successful because I've had the patience to deal with that. There's a lot of gamesmanship. Yeah. And I'd say... One thing I've I am I'm recognizing more and more is if I really want a particular player like or like this is a trade I want this thing done it's not th this is not I've engaged in this trade negotiation and I could go either way like I like having the discussion if we get this done okay but if I want a player and when I get stingy with like lower picks you know or like a gap of the 201 to the 207 those things like that and I get stingy of uh like no okay well no it's fine I'm not going to go through with this because I don't want to move that pick up to the higher two I regret it <laughs> like every time not getting it done yes okay. and so I've I've kind of recognized that about at least me personally of 
I'm not going to let smaller gaps get in the way of getting the deal done if I really want it to get done. If you got a guy you want, go get him. Right, because you're like, well, if I if I make this concession, you've won because you got what you wanted, and like I haven't won the trade as much as I want to win the trade, and then it all blows up, and you're like, there's like, a lot of last word managers. Like I had, and they want the last <laughs> word in the deal. Uh, uh, I had an offer all set up in this past draft, uh, our rookie draft, in the first to move up in the first round. And I and the the manager wanted some back end move up, and I wasn't willing to give up the move that they exactly wanted. And I said, "No, I'm gonna gamble. I bet Javante Williams drops to me Ooh. next pick, Javante Williams." And it was just it wasn't you. No, it was not me. Mm. And it was like I can't believe you let I, that get in the I way. I let this tiny back end stupid rookie pick get in the way of me getting my guy, and like it just it. When I let that stupid crap get in the way, <laughs> it it blows up in your face. This is turned into uh, the fancy footballers <laughs> on on the trade couch, you know, yeah. getting uh, psychoanalyzed here, reflecting on past deals. But hopefully, but you don't you don't have to like overwhelmingly win the trade. If you get the player that you wanted, you've won because you got what you were, were going after. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Well, we'll start with what we teased. The uh, Ian Rappaport tweeted out a statement from Kyler Murray's agent. Fortunately, I know it's serious because uh, he chose to write in all capitals. Yes. And uh, space very close together. It's so hard to read. It was many paragraphs to explain two points, which is he absolutely wants to see he wants to be your long-term quarterback, and number two, he desperately wants to win the Super Bowl. Uh, and number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pay me the money. <laughs> so, Give me all of it now. Yeah, it, it's hard. I think we're all we're all Cardinal fans. We have all been tagged over a thousand times a day by listeners of this show wanting our candid thoughts on the Kyler Murray situation. So let me let me start before with the sweet before the sour. Okay, okay. and the sweet reality is we want Kyler Murray here. The facts put out in this all capitals letter are true. We were a three win team, three consecutive years. We've improved, made the playoffs for the first time in five years. There were parts of the beginning of the season where he was an MVP candidate. I think there's a lot like, we don't want to be in the doldrums of Mason Rudolphville, like uh, the Steelers are, or in a muddling quarterback situation Kyler is a franchise quarterback he is a franchise quarterback the the sour part is the negotiating tactics and I'll be the first to admit like we are very player first player advocates yes. here on the show uh, careers are short yeah pay, pay paydays are yeah. paydays are sometimes it's one it could be one shot that you know so I understand all of that and I don't know what's happened behind closed doors I only know what's happened in the public and what's happened in the public has been abysmal from a PR standpoint. So, you know, the kindest thing I can say is that the PR decisions have been a nightmare, which is, you know, Kyler goes off and takes all his, his social media, Cardinal uniforms, Cardinal logos, Cardinal words off his social medias, media platforms. And then this letter comes out which well, and, is, and just lets it sit there out there in the open where everyone is talking about it. And he knows that everybody's talking about it. And he could simply address it, but no, it was crickets. You, you just look like you're throwing a a toddler fit. Yeah, it was really wild that this is not like a day or two. This was weeks yeah. and weeks where we know there's issues, and he is pouting while playing his video games at home, and you just don't hear anything from him. He doesn't step up. And so, yeah, I think it's a leadership and kind of uh, maturity issue. On the field, he's clearly worth it. Um, contractually, he's still got two yeah. years left. I mean, L Lamar Jackson, Mike, you brought this up yeah. in, in, in the studio. Lamar Jackson is a former MVP playing on his rookie contract who does not have, like, the next big contract. Sorry, Kyler. Like, and, yes, Kyler is at the point where he just now, just now, could be extended. And if the, if the team wanted to go, we're completely team first. Contractually, Kyler is under 
he has to play this year. They'll get the fifth year option, and then they can franchise him. Like you're talking three years that if the team wanted to be the big bully, they could just keep you locked up in Arizona. You're going to get paid, you know, over that time. But where? Well, that's what Dak's situation was, right? Yeah, like where he yes. didn't get extended, and then he got franchised, and then they got the deal done. Yeah, so the, so the taking the, it to the limit, and he got more. Like Dak bet on himself, and it, and the Cowboys bet against it. And Dak ended up getting more. It happens both ways, but the, the 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 statement issued by the agent, the very first sentence of the statement is: Kyler wants to be direct with you, loyal Arizona Cardinal fans in the great community. <laughs> like, are you kidding? <laughs> the Kyler, statement through Kyler the agent wants to be direct. So I am here to talk to you. The words that Kyler Murray wants to share with. What are you doing? That's that, like the, I mean, look. I get that it's posturing and the agent is the is the bad guy and he's deflecting the for the negoti but negotiations but Kyler your, wants to be your indirect. Your first statement is Kyler wants to be direct and so <laughs> the agent is out here talking for him. Yeah, he wants to be direct like, come and on. by being direct he's going to <laughs> ambiguously take the cardinal paraphernalia off his website. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, and I think the criticism is fair. It's also hard to maybe expect a 24-year-old to supersede the agent system in the NFL and not just trust a guy to get you your money, right? I think that's the promise the agent has is, hey, just do it my way. I'll get you the money. But as a leader on the organization, you'd like to see something different. Here's something interesting. Uh, the agent for Kyler Murray, same agent as Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. So for future yep. knowledge sake. Yeah, well, I can't wait that, that, till the all caps Cliff King, Kingsbury letter comes out with his Cliff Kingsbury logo at the bottom, and um, pulling it back to implications of what's going on. There are little, there are a few. Correct. Um, he'll be the quarterback for the Cardinals. This is what we've been saying since the beginning of all of the drama, so to speak. Like th this was going to go away for all intents and purposes on the field. It'll be an annoying talking point. It will make headlines. Uh, if we're lucky, God in heaven will give us another Dan Patrick interview with Kyler Murray about this topic. <laughs> oh, look, it, both sides happen. Like I said, you have Josh Allen, who he got his money immediately. Right. And it was like, Buffalo, are you sure? I know like we've seen the tools, but you've seen one elite year from Josh Allen and two kind of year. Seems like they were right. But imagine the Cleveland Browns after your – three of Baker Mayfield they're like this is it this is our guy we're going all in now it, then it would feel like the Cleveland Browns have made a massive mistake it's a good point that they're tied to him so you that being said I want I want Kyler to get the money that he has deserved but you are just eligible right now this is a huge decision for the franchise that changes their their future for a very long time that if they're tied to you they're tied to you that's yeah. right, and then your last impression was a was uh, a brutal playoff game where where you were outrushed by Matthew Stafford. Well, at least Matthew he threw, <laughs> threw no no touchdowns and two interceptions. Well, so. I was reminded that he did he did in fact throw a touchdown. He did. Tyler did. Yeah, to, to the, the other, other team. team. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah. I did not. You remember I him not flailing remember. on so the I goal hope, line, going, "Yeah, get I hope out they, of here!" I hope they work it out. I wish it would all happen, you know, off of Twitter, but. Um, he'll be the quarterback for the Cardinals moving forward. Yeah. Uh, Michael Thomas agreed to a restructured contract with the Saints. So he will be a Saint. That's great to know. Cause I, year. I guess I, I just yeah, assumed I with sure. like bad vibes that he wasn't a part of their future, but this restructure gives them 26.2 million in cap space important for the team and, and keeps Michael Thomas around as a Saint. Yeah. You wonder if some of the, the kind of conflict, was between Sean Payton and Michael Thomas, too, at this point. So maybe some of that baggage is gone. Yeah. Uh, Packers expected to, have not done it, expected to franchise Devontae Adams. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to get news on his quarterback soon, right? Well, his quarterback said there would be news soon. We'll see. Maybe news about news. Mike. Yeah, I mean, we're recording this a little bit earlier, uh, so he could be doing his segment on McAfee and – Okay. We have news. I don't know. Uh, the the Bucks are hoping to reach a long term agreement with Chris Godwin. Godwin is in a position coming off of a torn yeah. ACL, but 
I don't think that's going to hurt his market value at all. So he is he'll be highly in demand, and that will cost the Bucks a lot to bring him back. Yep. Ian Thomas, three year deal with the Panthers. <laughs> what? Tight, that's tight end. Yeah, Ian it, it's just one of those cases of yeah. um, important player to the team, not important to the fantasy universe. Ian Thomas, tight end. Uh, anything else? There's some overtime rule change, NFL competition committee meetings happening soon, maybe? Yeah, that, maybe? May, maybe. Maybe. Uh, uh, there was a really good guard. Uh, for the Buccaneers, Ali Marpet retired yeah. at age oh, yeah. 28. So whoever is coming up behind Tom Brady is going to be a, have a little bit more difficult of a time. Yeah, 28 years old, made $37 million and walking away. Yeah, good for you. All right, anything else, Brooksy? How you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, Al, you in the building? I'm here. I can see, I can see you poking up over those monitors. Some rumors we may get some cameras back there someday. Someday. Better get to the gym. <laughs> oh, 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 get bodied. Oh, brother. Or I, I mean, find like a real strong filter. I mean, that's me too. I'm just saying like <laughs> the, the cameras aren't on right now. I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, <laughs> It sounded worse. Oh, it sounded no, great. Yeah, it, was, it was fantastic. All right. We are. Boom shakalaka. We're in the mailbag. Mailbag. Bang, ooh. You fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Also, I've got a great uh, plastic surgeon I can refer you to for all the face stuff. I guess he doesn't have to buy lights for over there. <laughs> it's just going to be oh, a Oh, man, that is, that's an all-time <laughs> mailbag drop right there. Um, I love you, buddy. Uh, all right. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button if you have a question for the th for the show. We have a voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's jump into a voicemail. What's up, ballers? This is Eric from North Carolina. I have a dynasty trade question. I needed a cheap wide receiver with a lot of upside and got Allen Robinson for the 2022-206 and a 2023 second-round pick. What are your thoughts? Love the show. Thanks. So two twos yeah. for Allen Robinson, and the two hundred six is known. The ne the future, obviously uh, not uh, locked probably, in yet. But I mean, probably two hundred five or four. Yeah, that's interesting. Like he's twenty eight and a half right now. Yeah, where are we on Allen Robinson? I will be surprised, and maybe this is pessimism as someone who has Allen Robinson on his own dynasty roster. I will be surprised if Allen Robinson becomes a very relevant fantasy option. Um, obviously, you know, it's funny. We talk about the free agent class at wide receiver and about how it's Chris Godwin, but he'll be tagged and Devontae Adams is tagged. Yeah. And then the best one is like Mike Williams or, you know, it's trash. Here's I, Alan Robinson's out there. It's just, what do you believe? I mean, he was coming off the second highest yardage total of his career. Going into last year, I mean, the season before last was 102 for 1250 and six in Chicago, and the wheels fell off. And I think what I'm getting, the fact that this is even being discussed, is that people, the decision is whether Allen is done. Right. That's the decision because two twos for the shot at Allen Robinson. I'm still doing it. Yes, I'm. I'm very pro this trade. Like that. That is massive upside for little cost. Like thinking you can just. The chance that you hit on like a multiple year thousand yard guy in a second round, it's very low. And I, there's some social media, you know, uh, stuff going on. Smatterings, Mike. I, they're, yes, they're, thank that's you. What that's, they're that's a good word. Um, have seen where like Robinson kind of responding to things where uh, like people were alleging that we, we don't know why, but Matt Nagy is essentially like scripting Allen Robinson out uh, and Robinson's kind of like, yeah, like that's exactly what was happening. We don't know why you would franchise a player and then go that route. But it, Allen Robinson is, seems to be saying that there was a, there's some stuff behind the scenes. There was a game plan of not going to him. So, I mean, that's what I would say for Robinson too, but at least you know that that 
that's out there. So it's just a very mysterious situation. Giving up two twos for Allen Robinson, I think, is it was a great shot. I presume he's going to switch teams, right? Yeah, I, I doubt I he's back in so. Chicago. So he goes to a new team, which one of the things that we had as a takeaway to remember from the season was that people changing jerseys does not always work out. Oftentimes it doesn't. And he's going to be, you know, a 29-year-old this season. Um, so at 29 on a new team, I, I get it. A, a second rounder has a low hit rate. Two second rounders, maybe you hit something. But – is something better than Allen Robinson? That's the question. Is 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 Allen Robinson something valuable yeah, at all? I there's a higher likelihood I start Allen Robinson in my dynasty roster than either of the twos. So that's what makes me do the trade. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would take two twos right now for Allen okay. Robinson. Yeah. Well, you as the one who suffered. I was gonna say you you were burnt. It? Yeah. yeah. Uh, follow up question on Instagram: Would you rather have Allen Robinson or Kenny Galladay in a dynasty? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's Galladay for me, fresh off of a huge deal. Um, they're just they're close to the same age, twenty eight point three. Oh gosh, for Kenny Galladay. Yeah, yeah. I'll go. Oh, go. I I I am. Um, Man, it's been a it's been a minute since Galladay had some relevance, hasn't it? Yeah, I will actually take Allen Robinson over Galladay. Wow. Um, and you just heard how high. So I you am would on trade Allen Galladay <laughs> for two twos? Then. Absolutely, I would. Wow. Holiday Mike was Galladay worse. or Allen Robinson. Oh man, with no context of the new deal, it's very tough not to take Galladay. Okay, but uh, like, but once once Robinson is signed, that could be a completely different answer. Let's grab another voicemail. Hey ballers, I am in a rookie dynasty draft dilemma. I have been offered Javante Williams for the second overall pick and the seventh overall pick. Wanted to get your input. Also, love the show. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you. I, 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 he said, I've been offered uh, Javante for the second overall pick. And I was like, heck yeah, brother. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Then he added the seventh, which makes more sense. Would you? So the be, 102 and the 107. <laughs> I think I would r rather have Javante. This is not the strongest rookie draft class. Um I you know it's kind of similar to what you were saying in the quick question, Mike. If that's the guy you want. Oh man, the one I, I I would do that in a heartbeat. I would rather Javante. have Javante. What well, my hope here's my hope for the one oh two guys. It's that they can have a nice rookie year to be set up to be like Javante this year. Well, you would hope they're better. Like you, the 102, you're hoping that the draft locks in uh, you uh, like Najee and Travis Etienne. I mean, we don't know exactly what the role of Etienne would have been had he not gotten hurt for the Jacksonville Jaguars, but you have to make some assumptions that a first-round pick was going to come in there and dominate touches. So you're hoping that Isaiah Spiller gets taken somewhere on day two where he's set up to dominate touches. Like uh, Atlanta Falcons. Isaiah Spiller, Andy, uh, Spiller, is he still your preferred running back right yeah, now? Yeah, he is. Isaiah Spiller, round two, goes to the Atlanta Falcons. Would you prefer that or Javante Williams? I think I'd still take Javante. Okay. I mean, you. we know that Javante Williams is very good. It's, he, he, it's already translated – he was. He had a very solid rookie season. He only had the one game where he was the dude. We've seen him do it against he went professional defenses. Ham burglar. Yeah, he he was great. And um, but that's yeah, that's what you're hoping for with the 102. Yeah, it's clear situation, clear talent, opportunity. I'll take Javante. It feels bad because it feels like an overpay at this moment in time. But I lean taking Javante. Instagram question from Corbin. I'm addicted to sending trade offers. How do I stop? Do I need to stop? You can't make me stop. <laughs> oh, well, well, there's your answer. Yeah, Corbin, you took care of it. Keep do going. <laughs> Keep going. The only question you need to ask yourself is not, do I stop? It's, do people still like me? People like people who trade a yeah. lot, who offer trades a lot. I always enjoy them. Even even when the, the person is annoying or the trade offers aren't good, I still prefer, like, Give me lots of options. Give me lots of trades. I, I I love that. I don't. I think the question you have to ask is, are your trades more often helping your team 
or more often hurting your team. That's the real issue here. If you're bad at trading and you look back and you're like, mm, I keep losing these trades, maybe slow down a touch. Instagram question from John. Uh, this is a good one because we just had a dynasty trade involve this player. What is the offseason outlook of Devin Singletary? Mm. Which, um, you know, fresh off of some nice performances, we discussed it briefly, I think, the long-term outlook. Uh, I I think we've we've gotten to the point where I've seen enough of his career to believe that he will not be the guy by choice as much as by things working out in that direction, which he can handle. I'm not saying yeah. it's not a, a discount on his talent. It's just the way things work out. There were players, um, maybe this is a bad comp, you tell me, but like Justin Forsett had a long career. There was a very small window where he was kind of the guy. And I, he was good. And he was good. And I think Singletary can hold up. And but he, but Forsett was it was forced that it was like that was the plan was not just a Forsett correct and that's how I see the Singletary situation at this point. This is a very good team, very good coach, organizations doing things the right way, and they still don't seem to be wanting to settle on him long term. They think he's a good compliment, and they like who doesn't like a guy that can come and be the guy in an emergency. So I think uh, the off season outlook is trade him for value. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with just about anything you said. I believe that the Buffalo Bills plan will be to add another solid running back, a better running back than Zach Moss, um, and to have it be a timeshare. Get ready for you, James Conner to Buffalo. You can, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something like that. You can always have those plans, and then the draft goes by or free agency goes by, and the players don't fall to you, and boom, bam, Singletary's the guy. If he is, I think he'll be fantastic. But I would put the odds at 25% that he goes into next year as kind of the full-fledged starter, the way that he ended the year as the as the guy for them. I don't think that's their preferred route. That's not what they're trying to do. And he's also in the final year of his contract. So if, we, if we're talking dynasty-wise, he maybe, – maybe he goes in and he is the Buffalo Bills, you know – leader of the timeshare because the other guys will still be involved and he'll be solid for fantasy you still have a long road between that and then him having value in 2023 and further because it's, you you have to think about multiple years here which is it's a really good point and it was a lot of what we were looking at with chase edmonds in arizona okay we think he's going to be given the starting job right and he wasn't given the starting job and then he's a free agent and now what's the future for Chase Edmonds? Yeah, you have a Tevin Coleman situation. Yeah. we are just waiting and waiting and waiting, and then they're retired. And he'll be 25 at the start of this coming season. So that means going into free agency, he'll be a 26-year-old running back that is not going to be the hottest commodity on the market. Right. All I, right. I would agree. Trade him. Yeah. We got there. Uh, Instagram question, Keeper League. Would you trade Jamar Chase for a sixth or Cam Akers for an 11th round pick? Keeper oh, league. would you keep, Keeper not league. trade? Would you keep Jamar for a six or Cam Akers for an 11? It would be Jamar for me. Jamar Chase. Agreed. Instagram question, would you trade Calvin Ridley for an early second-round pick? I would rather have Calvin Ridley than the second-round pick. Yeah, this is uh, – Calvin Ridley, it's a it's a difficult conversation because there is nothing. There There is absolute nothingness out there. The rumor mill uh, has, I guess, had some rumblings – and those, to me, at least what I've come across, maybe you guys have seen something different, but most of the rumblings I've seen are at Atlanta ending up trading him. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if he's on your dynasty squad, it's do you think Calvin Ridley is going to keep playing football? Because if he keeps playing football, you're going to be really upset with yourself for settling for a second-round pick. Now, if it's a high first and you believe he's going to play football, I'm still willing to entertain that just because you have the probability that or a chance that he doesn't come back and at least you got a usable or what should turn into a starting player for you. Anything to add, Jay? No, I, I, I would uh I would take the chance with a second on Calvin Ridley. He still looks great and I think he'll play like football. You'd prefer Calvin. I would prefer Calvin. I okay. would I would take the shot. I think he'll be traded and play football again, but but that is there is it's no just, inside yeah, knowledge. A gut, gut. That's a gut feeling. Twitter from Fantasy Football Seventeen says, "How are you doing?" 
I'm doing all right. Thank you. Pretty that's, well. That's, yeah. the, whole, that's Pick, the whole question. Pickleball this oh. morning. Yeah. yeah. Feel feel How pretty good. Back? You had hurt, back? You had yeah. hurt the back. I hurt the back last time pickleballing, and then I was better this time pickleballing. So, no, <laughs> p- back is fine. You were better at pickleballing, or the back was better? The back was better. The pickleball was the same? Pickleball was worse because of wind. Wind was, uh, but also the, your pickleball was better because all you, your good shots were because of the wind. Yes, <laughs> you should have seen this feller when the when the when he was having the back issue. Today, oh, man. today? No, no, this is the last time we were playing. This guy just just like shuffling, from, not moving too much. Oh no, no, I was a statue trying to move. I mean, really? I, oh, I was in. I was. I should not have been playing. Like for sure, I should have uh, said upper back, middle back, lower back, lower back. Okay. Uh, you almost got there, but um, yeah, it was it was certainly one of those. I mean, whoo! Better hit the gym. You better hit that ball near me. <laughs> lower back. Yeah, we're getting there, aren't we? Mm. Yes. Uh, but today, uh, do five hundred better than five hundred? How'd you do today? Better than five hundred, I okay. think. All right. right Depends around. on how many games he played with me as his teammate. Al was out there, right? Oh yeah. 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 How did Al play? He played fine. He played fine. He played his his game. How we? It, it was a. Uh, how are we doing? It was a long season, right? Of a football. Long, long fantasy football yes. season. Yes. Yes, it was. Now we're not supposed to get an extra week this year, right? No, no. it's it, it's still going to be seventeen, and I think it'll be seventeen for a, a bit, a good bit, yeah. just until all the records are set. And yeah, we want to break them again. I mean, the, if the owners have their way, they will get it up to eighteen. But I would say we're a couple years from. There. Is there such thing? Uh, as too I'm going to call twenty twenty three. Really, you yeah. think it'll be that fast? I do. Isn't isn't that too much? Yes, it is. I mean, isn't there less is more type of thing? You know, the, the excitement. Yeah, I think we'll get used to the 17, and then as soon as we do. <laughs> I wonder how the players felt this year with the extra week, because I didn't hear a lot of that at the end. That's true. Um, I guess it, that means it went better than expected in some regards. A bunch of injuries throughout the year, or mathematically more injuries, would be a problem for them getting it to 18, I think. Although they have the right to do it, the owners do, right? They have the right, and I think if they move to 18, you might see a double bye week, which really would add two weeks, and then that might be too long oh for a football gosh. season. It would add two weeks. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah, you're right. It would happen, too. Uh, Instagram question from Jude Cypher says, where do I draft Zeke next year? Oof. I would love – will you speak to me on this? I yeah. mean, I'm sitting here. I got a dynasty team with Zeke, CMC, and Dalvin Cook. I would draft Zeke in the second round. In a redraft. In redraft, okay. In redraft. So that, to me, in some ways seems... Uh, is that optimistic? No, I don't think that's optimistic. I think optimistic is saying Zeke is going to be back. He's going to be the dude. He's always been great. He's in the best shape of his life. He should be after all the top, top running backs. He should be pick six or seven or eight in the first round. I don't think that's the case. I think that um, he is... Not the same player. Tony Pollard is probably better at this point. And he's a guy that's going to get enough work, and he is solid. He's going to go out there and give you at least 10 fantasy points in almost every game, which is, hey, that's great. Um, he's a solid, important fantasy asset, but I don't think he is the bell cow, running back, fantasy star uh, ever again. Is there a world, Mike, where CMC is still worth the 101? Oh, yeah. Yes, 100%. The when Christian McCaffrey was on the field, like what was it? What were his finishes? I know it was only a couple games, but I mean he was like a top five guy in every single game, right? He, yeah, uh, yeah. Other than the one he was cut short, yeah. and injured on. Yes, I think Christian McCaffrey is is j- just as deserving as the one on one as Jonathan Taylor is. I don't think I'm, he'll be drafted. Yeah, yeah. In very the, many I, places. I don't blame people. Now, having said that, I do not blame anyone who's like, nope. No, I'm not doing that was, again. One, three, sixteen, five, and five in the non-injury shortened games. <laughs> like, I mean, that's, he's he's outrageously. I good got that right, right? That you you did get that right. So and he's gonna he, he's he gonna catch seventy plus passes, like which Jonathan Taylor is not going to do. So if you're in a PPR, that's a huge bump. But I get two years in a row of the number one overall pick missing essentially the whole entire season. I understand that that. That feels bad, and maybe you don't want to do that again. No, but it's going to be great when you get him at the fourth, <laughs> at the fourth Eat, spot. Sure, it is interesting too, just with what's happening with Matt Rule and the team not having success yet with him. 
Like you almost that almost bends itself towards. And I don't really need to protect Christian McCaffrey. We got to win ball games, and winning ball games is easier with a with him out there on the field. Yeah, and it's maybe the maybe the Panthers add another running back. Like they, he, Chuba was not necessarily great in in. I mean, they had a big look at him, so maybe they add someone else. But like a lot of other situations, like uh, like Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. I get why you would put A.J. Dillon in because A.J. Dillon is an excellent football player. But down in Carolina, there's no one who's even close to as good as Christian McCaffrey. So when you're pulling him off of the field, you are making your team worse. You're not making it like, oh, well, we're, you know, we're, we can get by for a couple of places. No, your team is worse. Yeah. Mike Davis will go back to Carolina. Oh, Joe, don't do that. You're making your team worse yeah. <laughs> when you take Christian McCaffrey off the field. Let's close with this one off of Instagram. Uh, uh, Chefster says, what's the highest rookie pick you would trade away for Terry McLaurin? Oh, man. I really, I, I feel like that's one where it's, you know, it's tough. I, I think yeah, it would be very tough. I think it would be the back half of the first. I don't think that's, I'm giving that's where up. I'm at. I don't think I'm giving up a top six pick for Terry McLaurin. 107 is what's in my head yeah. right away. I yeah. think they're, that's where I'm at. I think he's still worth that. I think on the field he's a fantastic wide receiver, and hopefully by the end of his career it's not always just the case of what would have happened if we ever had a competent quarterback for him. D.J. Moore and McLaurin in a dynasty. D.J. Moore. Mm -hmm. Isn't, uh, are they similarly aged? No, McLaurin's old. Yeah, McLaurin is 26 years old right now. He's old. <laughs> well, I'm saying, that, I'm saying like he, 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 yeah. DJ Moore is two years younger, 24. That's crazy because yeah. he's played one extra season. Yes, because right. okay. DJ Moore was a bitty baby was boy. Was a little baby boy. All right, uh, that's going to do it for this episode of the show. Now, we're doing a coaching carousel episode on Thursday. We're going to walk through the, the big transactions, offensive, defensive coordinators, head coaches, implications for the different offenses. It's a pretty important big episode. Show. It'll big show. It'll be a lot show. of fun. Cliff's still the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'm trying to change it before we recorded that episode, but I you can. don't have any control. Get on the carousel, Cliff. <laughs> Get on the carousel. Uh, UltimateDraftKid.com. Oh, you, we need to talk to Amazon. Get a, one of those oh. McVeigh offers. Oh, Look, they, they don't want him in the so Did you guys good. hear about this? I'm hearing that Cliff Kingsbury could be the next big announcer. He'd be. So I, good. Him in the booth would be just... Don't put him in the booth. Put him in that nice home in Scottsdale the way that like Peyton's at a... a... <laughs> I, th I thought you were going to say put him in the Booker Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Cliff Mobile. I'm just, I'm just saying that would put be... Put him in the blimp. Cliff's castle. Look, mm. Jeff, that would be must-watch television if Cliff were somehow... Just if you wrestled him Wait, away... were you just talking to his agent? I, no, I was talking oh, to okay. Mr. Beast. <laughs> Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah. First name basis. No big deal. All right. That'll do it for today's show. UltimateDraftKit.com if you want to get in on your chance to win the Listener League spot. And you get the UDK. Look at that. Look at that. That'll we'll do it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.